What's going on, everyone? Welcome on into the TC Trading Channel. So today we are finally, finally, it feels like forever, talking about how to paper trade options on the Weeble desktop platform, okay? So they recently came out and updated their mobile app and allowed you to paper trade options, which we have a video on already on the channel. But now we're gonna use the desktop platform right here to start paper trading options. So finally, you can do this pretty much just like you'd be able to do this on the live account with your real with real money so we're looking at apple i actually like apple a lot if it can break up over today's highs 160.50 for a move to about 161. Uh, if i zoom back out on this chart uh, I, I do like that as an area of resistance up towards that 161 which was actually the close like two days ago um, so that would be kind of the trade idea for this for this play so what I'm gonna do is walk you through that trade live. And right now we're kind of up at resistance, but if we do get the breakout, it could be a good opportunity. If we don't, it could be a good short here on Apple as we speak. But let's just walk you through how this works so you can get in and get out what you need to know. Now, here's my layout. There's other videos on the channel going over. We both custom layouts, this and that and everything. Great, awesome, cool. I haven't completely maxed out my layout here, but if I go to my other layouts, I you know customize them to my liking. Because I trade with, with live money or with real money, um, for the most part, I pretty much never paper trade anymore. But for someone who's starting out, trying things themselves, this could be very, very useful. And I highly recommend you try paper trading before you get, take it over to a live account, especially when it comes to options. Learn how those things work because there's a lot of ways to lose when it comes to options. You can make a lot of money, but you can also lose a lot. And there's a lot more ways you can lose, okay? So... Up in the top right of your platform, mine's cut off because my screen, but I will show you, you know, what it means. I'll put a screenshot up. There's a widget, add widgets toolbox, okay? It'll look something like this. Make sure you go over to what we now have is the options widget, which I think is the first time we've been seeing this on the paper trading layout. You used to not be able to add this, okay? Now again, make sure in the top right of all your widgets, there's a PM, stands for paper money, um, just to make sure you're on the paper trading platform and you're not using a live account in case you have money in your live account uh, as well, because if you weren't paper trading, you don't wanna be using your actual money, um, especially if you're trading with a lot more money than you know, let's say you would normally use or whatever you're willing to risk, you know? So let's do that. Make sure you have this. Now you can put this wherever you want. I, I like to overlay it on my chart so in this case, I'm going to get rid of it here. Um, I have it overlaid on my chart so I can kind of go back and forth on the chart widget to select the options that I want. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I, you know, you can customize it. You can put it somewhere else. You know, one of my other layouts, I'll kind of go to my customized layout and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's my options trading customized layout. Um, so what I have here is I can pull up the ticker symbol of the, here's one way to do it, of a stock I'm looking at. For example, here's SPY. Then on the right-hand side, uh, I will also pull up that stock. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the option chain and then select the option that I want to for SPY. And on the right-hand side, it's like kind of half on the screen. My order entry, order book level two, all that is connected to my right widget or the, the right big square box widget, which is connected to this option widget right here. So whatever option I select here will then po auto populate through my, you know, classic trade, my order book level two and my time in sales. So I'll be able to watch and follow the data for that specific contract. And then when I go back to the chart, for example, I'll look at these spy calls right here. I'll, I click on those. I go to the chart. Now this chart is looking at the spy call. So what I like to do is once I have dialed in a contract that I want, I will now have my chart right here. I will watch the chart of the actual stock. I will compare that to the chart right here of the option contract that I'm looking at. And then I'll ultimately enter my orders in as I see fit. And at least I have a good understanding of, of how this option has been moving over whatever time frame I am looking at to trade this guy, right? So if the day trade, you know, dial it into the one, you know, the one day, you know, five minute chart, something like that, uh, and see how volatile the option is. Is it too volatile for me? Or where do I want to get an entry? Is this, you know, is the decay, you know, really apparent by, by the option contract or by the option trading um, that we're seeing the price action, right? You, you'll be able to understand those things pretty quick. So that's one option. If you want to screenshot this, copy this layout, it could be useful. Um, I've used it a couple times uh, myself. Uh, I'm not like a dialed in just day trade. I don't just day trade option all the time on this layout. But if I did, this is where when I do, this is one that I like to use a lot. So it's a useful idea. So customize that however you see fit and then, you know, 
take this and, and run with it how you see, right? But ultimately, let's go, let's go at this Apple trade right here. So here we are back in the paper trading, paper money platform or side of the account. It's down here on left hand side under the paper trading icon and little dollar sign at the bottom. Um, might be slightly different depending upon, you know, where exactly it's laid out for you, but let's go. So Apple, we'll go back to the chart here. Apple is, you know, right up there. It looks like it wants to break out. If it breaks out over this resistance here, it's going to probably pop. So let's go look at those speculative calls. Okay. Should you wait for the break? Yes. Yes, you should. Let's just play this for an example. Okay. I'm going to go about the 160 calls. Okay. When I click on these calls, because I have made sure that all of my groups up in the top right of my widgets are set to group one. When I change or select something on one of my widgets, it's going to change across all of them, which is good. Now, when it comes to entering your orders in, as of right now, there's two ways to do it. Okay. Way number one, method number one is using the classic trade widget, which is this guy right here. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Now, I guess I'm, I'm kind of front running a potential breakout. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt. This is not necessarily the best way to trade, but if I do think, and I'm speculating that we are going to get the breakout at some point today, this is not a terrible idea to trade, I guess, or this is a valid play. So I'm watching the, the bid and the ask up here, 194 by 190. I'm going to see if I can get filled around 190 for 10 contracts. Time enforces day. I'm going to click on simulated buy. I'm going to submit that. Okay. Now under my orders, we'll see it is a current working order. Once it gets filled, it will be no longer showing up under working and it will move to filled. Okay. That's how that goes. Let's see if we can get filled right now, the bid and ask are, you know, just North of where my limit limit order is. So give it a few minutes here. If I have to adjust it, I will, but I'm looking to see if I can get filled. Now, what I'm going to do really quick, my order on Apple got filled. So we're in, we are now in. Okay. Boom. Just like that. Now we have a position right here. Here are Apple 160. Now I can kind of highlight these guys and look at the chart for these options. Here are the options. If we break out over the high of the day, which is what I'm looking for, this is going to move quite substantially to the upside. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll go back to the Apple uh, chart and we'll watch it. Okay. We'll watch it. So now we'll watch Apple. I'm looking for Apple to move to 161. If we get that, that's when I'm going to take my profits on this trade. And ideally I'd want to see it holding up over about 160. So, you know, your risk reward here is like kind of one-to-one -one or just a little bit better than one-to-one. -one. I got in around this, like, you know, 140 or uh, 160, 35 area or so. Uh, I'm going to risk 35 cents to the downside and I'm taking profits at about, you know, what does that do the math? 65 cents upside. That's actually not bad. Not, not a terrible risk rewards. So now let it play out. There's two ways that after this trade kind of goes through and kind of show you guys how it works. I will then walk you through the other way to enter your orders. Uh, and all that good stuff. So really quick too here, while we're in this trade, there's two ways to exit. We're getting very close to that breakout here over that 160, 50 area. There's two ways to exit. If I go to my positions and click on the three dots to the left-hand side of my position, it'll open or it'll now select that as the option contract. Now it'll populate the chart. It'll populate it everywhere where I have set to um, group one. So I can go back into my classic trade widget, this guy on the right-hand side right here. And I can go ahead and sell my contracts. Make sure that you have the option contract selected right here that you're currently in. Okay. Make sure that that's on the screen. So I would go ahead and sell this just like I would sell a stock, pick my limit price, set all that good stuff right now. You know, we see that Apple is now falling off. So it's getting rejected here. Kind of a false breakout move. Maybe I need to go cut a loss, right? If I need to do that, I will go in here and I will enter my order, enter the limit price that I want to and set my order up and exit the trade as I see fit. There's another way to do it. If I pull up the widgets again and I go over to paper and I go over to order entry, here's another way that you can get into and out of positions. If I go to enter an order, I'll have to make sure I specify the ticker symbol, the option contract, whatever. I hate using the order entry like this. I love the classic trade, uh, you know, in terms of what I prefer, I much prefer the classic trade widget. It's so much easier to use. Um, this is going to be a little more confusing or complicated, but it could be an option, not an, an idea. So make sure you set this to group one, for example, which actually, by the way, 
I got it down here in the bottom of my screen. So we can kind of see that. Let me get rid of it right here in the middle. But I have it down here towards the bottom. So I can get in and get out whatever I want to do um, on the regular order entry down here. So right now we are selected. I have selected. I hit those three dots. And I've selected the option contract uh, that I'm currently in. And so I could also go ahead, enter my limit price, all that good stuff on this contract, okay, if I wanted to. Ultimately, I like using the classic trade, but those are the two options as of right now in terms of entering positions. You see down here the active trade, it's not going to work. These aren't actually um, bright, they're not highlighted yet, so these are not going to work, they're dull. Um, so they're not allowing you to use the classic trade or the active trade, sorry, as of right now on the paper trading platform. So you can only really use, at least I would say, I would much prefer just using the classic trade widget right here to enter your orders. Uh, market orders or limit orders, and then time enforced either a GTC or a good till day. Now, you can't use stops. You can't do that stuff in the paper trading, you know, platform or on the paper trading platform right now. Maybe that's something that, that will change, but as of right now, you can't do the stops, and it's pretty much just limit orders, market orders. Uh, and I would probably get familiar with just using limit orders. That's what I like to use the most, and it's probably the most effective way to get in and out at the price points that you want. Um, but that's how it kind of goes. So again, right now on this Apple trade, let me jump back and check on how the actual stock is doing. We've broken down below the area that I wanted to see it hold. So right now I would, I would like to do here is take the loss, right? So taking the loss, I'm going to go into my contract, my order entry right here, where I'll make sure I select, hit those three dots. I'll select the option contract that I want to get out of. I'm going to click on the 10, make sure I have, I have a position of 10. I'm going to sell 10 of the contracts. Okay. Again, it's under my positions tab right here. I can scroll through and see if a quantity of 10, my market value, all of that stuff tells me average price, last price, all of that. If I want to get out, I'm going to specify a limit price, let's say 176, and then I'm going to get out. Now this limit price is going to move unless I'm on it and editing actively it is going to move and, and pretty much put you, you know, right in between that bid and ask that you're seeing right now on this option contract live. Okay. So if you were to click on that quickly, it should be set to a price that should fill you relatively quickly, if not right away. The only problem is that if the stock moves, you know, seconds after you enter the order and it moves against you in, in a pretty big direction, you know, then make sure you have to go back and edit your order, which you can go ahead and do so pretty easily. It'll come up under working orders. Let's just say I want to do that. Okay. I'm going to say a limit price. I'm going to set a limit price on this right now at, let's just say 1.9. Let's see if I can get like 1.95. I'm going to just use the little dial here. And one more quick thing to also mention, see how if I hover over the little, uh, I guess, arrow, or the little, the marker on the right hand side of the limit price. I can have this set to last price, mid price, the bid or the ask, or manual input. So I like to go to manual input and then input this how I want to enter it. Uh, it's up to you, but you can go to last price. You can change this to the mid price. This way, all you're gonna have to do is click on simulated sell and uh, you're gonna get out pretty easily. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll go to, let's just see, I'll do, I'll do the mid price, which will be in between the bid and ask, and I should get filled pretty quickly. So let me go ahead and do that right now on this position. It'll be a few cent loss. I mean, a $100, $200 loss based on the 10 contracts, but it's like 20 cent loss, a little bit less than 20 cent loss based on my entry price, but I'm gonna get out. Let's say I wanna get out, okay? Boom, simulated sell. Just like that, we now have a working order at a 172 limit price. Now. We're going for a 169 by 170. So the, the, the stock has moved down quickly and it looks like I have not gotten out. So, which is possible. So in terms of editing this order under working orders, click on the three dots, okay? Click on modify. And then from here, you can modify. So right now I can go ahead and modify. Now, actually, as we speak, the stocks come back up and it's actually looking like it's going to hit and take me out. So give it a second. There is a slight delay here. Webull's live account is not going to be as delayed as the paper trading account. Definitely not. Make sure you're aware of that. And it looks like I, I got filled. So I got out. Okay. In that situation. But if you had to modify it, click on the modify button and you can go ahead and enter and change the, the limit price that you need to change to, to whatever you got to change to. So that's how it works. And it was kind of fast paced because we were kind of live doing a trade, but hopefully that was the best way to explain it. Just do it, do it live and show you how it works. Um, that's kind of how I would go about it. Ultimately, there's a lot of ways to customize it. Again, going back to Apple's chart, looks like Apple pulled back below the area that I want to see it hold, but 
realistically today, it's kind of in this little range from like, you know, 159 to like 160, 50. And it's in until that range breaks, we're kind of just chopping around. So not too much of a crazy day, kind of a range day so far, it looks like on Apple as we speak, but that's how it works. That's how paper trading platform works or the paper trading desktop works now for options on Weeble. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Check out our other videos if you want to see how it works on the mobile app. Other videos when it comes to Weeble tutorials, we got tons of that here on the Weeble playlist. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing, the thumbs up button. We have links and resources down below if you want to check those out as well. There's some great stuff, such as a webinar covering three trading signals to add to your arsenal for free, linked down in the video description box. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.